Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Seeker Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode two of three in our series about Star Trek, Bad Science, and Seeker Plus all together in one big mashup. We're gonna talk to Dr. Ma from the National Ignition Facility some more, and we're gonna make sure that we get into more science of Star Trek. So subscribe for more Seeker Plus, check out the audio podcast wherever you get your casts, and we're gonna continue our conversation about this science. Real quick, the National Ignition Facility, or NIF, has 192 different lasers, and it's tasked with testing the feasibility of the fusion energy for our future. They actually create fusion there on a basically daily basis, but it's, you know, I don't wanna give away too much, so I'll just leave it there, it's really cool. Right out of the gate, we're gonna get into phasers versus lasers, what happens when we point the NIF at a person. We never would actually do that, but if you did. And of course, a bit about Star Trek timelines, because there are many. Also what happened when the NIF appeared in Star Trek, the ultimate crossover. So make sure that you stick around. Tammy Ma definitely knows her stuff. I hope you love bad science, let's kick into it. Hypothetically speaking, in terms of lasers as an energy source and also then potentially as like weaponry. I guess. I don't even know if it's weaponry so much. She's, sorry, but her face is like, this happens to me all the time. Yeah. Because <laughs> like they use phasers, which are not lasers in Star Trek. They call them oh, right. phasers specifically. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the, the little guns. They, yeah. 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 And also the ones the ships have. Oh, OK. But lasers in general wouldn't really do that much if you just pointed a laser at something. Right, Tammy. Oh no! It sounds like you can you can blow it up. Yeah, I really? mean, creates... am I allowed to cuss on film? Yeah, oh. yeah, okay. Tammy. Oh, got it. All <laughs> <Yeah>. right, <laughs> you can blow it up. Um, <laughs> um, easily. Oh, and like it's always a risk right now. Even with um, off-the-shelf lasers, you can shoot them at planes and blind the pilot. Right. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah, what do you mean off-the-shelf lasers? Buy like a green. A green Pretty light. strong green lasers that can. <laughs> what are these? Vulnerable. I don't know about this. Well, oh, it's maybe better that Just you don't, don't, don't go online don't and look this. for them because yeah. if you point them at airplanes, the yeah. FAA will come and find yeah. you and arrest Whoa. you. And okay, guys, don't do that if you're There are enormous eye hazards for sure. Um, Whoa. Many of them. And yeah, you can definitely think about a lot of different defense applications using lasers, that's for sure. Are yeah. you like contracted to make these and you can't tell us? I can't tell you. Okay, <gasps> that makes a lot of sense. It seems like a yes. <laughs> I'm not accusing you, I'm just saying it seems like a I yes. I just can't say. Okay. Just can't say. That's totally fine. Um, so if somebody would get uh, messed up if they, like if I shot a laser at Trace. I got a powerful one. Like, I got a powerful one, yeah. What about one of your lasers? 192. Oh yeah, for sure, any one of them. Would I mean, if it's making something so damage. hot. Yeah. Really? Wow. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh -huh. I mean, it does make sense, but I guess I didn't think about it. Yeah. And is it always like a, you know, like, stream type lasers like the ship seems like they shoot those like they, they will seem more plasma based than plasma anything. based yeah okay this is new to me yeah what does that mean when, do you want to go you want this one? you want to take no, the plasma because yeah no, yeah, that's a star trek well i mean it seems more like well, it, it seems more like fluid based than it does light beam based. oh when I they're see shooting what you're okay in okay. original star trek stuff it's more like a beam and it just goes like beep but in the new oh. Star Treks, it seems more like a blue blue, like they're they're throwing <laughs> fluid based stuff. Like uh, this is perfect like for the audio laser. only. Yeah, I'm just yeah, trying to okay. help with the audio. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> but they, it seems more like they're shooting little packets of energy, okay. which are likely people plasmas. get hit by them in the movie. Yeah, oh, okay. and they kind of go like right. they kind of splat. They get yeah. hit and fall over. Yeah, and so and it well, does definitely yeah. have inertia of some kind. So uh, I okay. There's something. So I mean, that's what a laser is too. It's a packet of photons essentially, and if Sick. it's energetic enough. You can make it as long as you want. We call those, and you can keep them on continuous wave lasers, or you can okay. you can modulate their power as a function of time too. So, so they're very precise and they're very pointable. They're, we call it coherent, and that's how it's different from white light. Okay. And so when you when you focus that much energy, you can do a lot of damage. So yeah. you can purposefully focus a laser and just shoot a <laughs> chunk of that plasma? Question mark. Yeah. Yeah, well, you turn things into plasmas, basically, yeah. Okay, and yeah. what would that do if I shot that at Trace? Why me? Why are we shooting at me? I mean, I'm fine You're with it. Fine. For science, the for science. only other fine. one it's here. Fine. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, depending on how powerful, you might be from a burn to slicing off parts. Wow. It seems like That's neither- That's awesome. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and we're gonna try that when we come back. <laughs> um, so, yeah, in the, in the film, people don't seem to be burned or uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Like sliced. <laughs> I was thinking Maimed. of a more Dismembered. scientific term, but I don't know what it is. Doesn't matter. Dismembered? 
Sure. Yeah. Uh, oh, whatever. I'm not going to. Th- I'll think of it like an hour from now when we're not <laughs> recording anymore. But yeah, they just get like hit and they like fall over. But I guess that's for like PG purposes. Maybe. Yeah. But it would have been oh, you're really right. cool. There isn't much blood either. Yeah. No. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah there's no. Cauterize it. Yeah. Cauterizing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 That's what that's I was word. talking about. Yeah. But it would be really cool if I'm saying in the movie, you could just, you know, see somebody's arm come off or, you know, kind of Tarantino like jokey. Yeah. Uh, more like, gore. Sh- Yes, because yeah. it does seem, I don't know, I thought it was kind of silly. They're shooting each other, and it just seems like it's like, oh, like a paintball. It's like, you know, Ow. Yeah, and they just fall over. <laughs> right, and know, they grab seems... their stomach. They always get shot, like, oh. somewhere, somewhere easy to grab. They're like, <laughs> oh, oh, God, my blood on the hand. Yeah, yeah. That's more movies. Very movies. strange. Um, okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna f- get rid of a few more, and then we'll hop back into uh, things that we can learn here as a, well, I'll learn. You guys probably <laughs> already know everything that's going on. So in the first shot of the movie, uh, they are flying. There's like audio of the, you know, like like command center. And they're talking about how there's this unidentified lightning storm in space and they don't know what it is. But during that conversation, the shot is the USS Kelvin driving into that thing. So I thought that was really, really dumb and kind of took me out of it right away. And again, love the film, love the intro sequence. It's really cool. But if you don't know what something is and you're in a spaceship, why would you be flying right into it? That's more of a philosophical question. I mean, yeah, Death Wish, Captain. And yeah, I mean, yeah. sounds like he's he's James Kirk's pop. So, well, no, Maybe first it was like, the other guy, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah. yeah, first it was the other guy. I, wait, I don't even know his name. Oh, I don't think they I ever say that it. guy's name. He did have a name. But I don't remember his name. They probably said it, yeah, yeah, at some point. I don't remember what it is. But anyways, yeah. if you're out there, check out that first shot again because it's a really cool shot. It's like really close up on the ship, and then it comes out. It's and a like, beautiful opening it's, shot. It, it's a beautiful opening shot, but it ends with such a silly thing that they're flying right yeah. into an they, obvious obstacle. Not to defend Starfleet, but, uh, you know, they're explorers, so maybe they were exploring. <laughs> exploring by driving they're right into it. exploring, driving right up to it. I love you, J.J. Abrams, and I'm sure you're listening, um, but that was very silly to me, and I'm sorry for picking these movies apart. Um, there's, Don't be sorry. That's your job. I guess that's true. <laughs> um, so there's another uh, part here where Spock, if you remember, is like, showing him he like puts his hand oh, on, yeah. his, on his head and he's like giving him the flashback mind meld and he very quickly kind of skims over what happened in the past and what happened was that he was supposed to go save Romulus by shooting this red matter and like saving it from a from a supernova which was going to explode it and he's just like late to it he just fails basically he just says like so I got our fastest ship and I got the red matter and the unthinkable happened and the planet was destroyed it's like that's not unthinkable at all that's exactly what you were going that's your mission that was his that's entire why mission you were there was to save this thing and he just didn't do it and didn't explain why and then uh, uh, Kirk is just no questions he's just, he's like, just like oh yeah well that's tough yeah it's a bummer yeah that sucks. and if you think about it if he succeeded in his mission, the entire movie wouldn't have happened. True. Nothing would have, nothing would have gone wrong. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's how the movie came to play. So Star Trek has always played with time a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They like playing with time travel. I actually went to the Star Trek, uh, the Science Fiction Museum, and they had a Star Trek exhibit. It's in Seattle, uh, the Science okay. Fiction Museum. If you haven't been, it's really fun. Yeah. Super nerdy. We'll go there uh, They have, time. like, original stuff from the Star Trek original series and, like, uniforms yeah, and nice. stuff. I got to watch really that cool. first, I guess. But they have a giant timeline of all of the Star Treks and where they all fall on this big timeline, oh, including okay. time travel episodes where it's like, okay, so then they went here and then they went over here and then they went up there and then they went to that one and then they have a crossover here and then yeah. so it's it gets convoluted to say the least mm-hmm. um, but this is a whole other timeline like it's a completely from separate timeline from gotcha. the other Star Treks that you would think of on television or even the other movies this okay. is uh, the moment that Nero goes back in time which I mean, mm-hmm. I haven't even talked about going back in time and Jill says them <laughs> but like the moment he goes back in time he creates the Biff timeline Right, to, uh, which ruins the whole thing. The back to which the is Spock's fault, and that's all yeah. I'm trying to say. It he is messed fault. up, and nobody blames him. Yeah, no, okay. they don't. They don't because he's Spock. What are you? How are you going to blame Spock? Uh, like this, yo, Spock. <laughs> uh, what the hell, man? We gave you one thing to do. You took your sweet time. There's literally a clip of him just like checking off things on a clipboard, <laughs> like walking around the red matter. Like, okay, this looks good. Everything looks good. I guess I'll leave soon. It's like, go, man. You just billions of people died on this planet because you were, I don't know what, going to the bathroom. Right. So 
I'm actually a really bad nerd, and I probably don't watch as much sci-fi as I should. Okay. Um, but I have to say, the next Star Trek movie, Into Darkness, mm -hmm. I loved. Okay. Because parts of it were filmed at NIF. Ah, okay. So which parts? Do you know? Do you know? Yeah, I uh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, I don't know. Uh, well, <laughs> our, our target chamber, where we actually do all our experiments, where all the lasers are pointed at, where all the diagnostics are hanging off of, yeah. um, that was actually the warp core for the Starship Enterprise. Whoa. So in the movie, <laughs> um, it actually malfunctions, and they actually have to go in and, and try to fix it. And oh. they're running around the facility, having battles. Cool. It was, it was pretty cool. Were you guys able to just like hang out and eat popcorn? And so you're like, oh, hey, what's up, Benedict Cumberbatch? How are you? Nice yeah, you, you yeah. know, really cool. we hang out on a daily basis. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, uh, you guys became best friends. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> no, not at all. Really? I wasn't allowed in. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Rubbed um, it off. No, actually, the facility was still running um, while they were filming. Um, so we were doing maintenance during the day, and they would actually film at night. Oh, mm. that's really cool. Yeah. Oh, that's super neat. Yeah, that's nifty. Uh -huh. hey, come on, is that guys. a new one? Hey. I don't feel like no, that. No, not People at all. say no. that all the time, I'm sure. Um, okay, great. You have a favorite sci-fi film? It's favorite sci-fi film. I mean, I love The Matrix when it came out. I think I mm. saw that seven times in theaters. Yeah, yeah. When I it mean, came out, just, it was my favorite. It was movie, just I incredible. Yeah. It was so. It was so many people copied it, and it created this whole interesting universe that, you know. There's even science now that they're like, do we live in a hologram? And it's it's not related to the Matrix, but it is kind of that Inspired same idea where it's like, do we live in a computer simulation? Are we? In, yeah. Is this real? Could this be a real thing that's really happening? Do you like the Matrix? You see the Matrix? I did see the Matrix. That was see? pretty awesome. So, oh, so yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah okay. We can make a watch list for you if you there want. There we go. Like that would be yeah, fun. I'd probably I would be, appreciate that. Oh, you would appreciate yeah. it. Okay, I was yeah, gonna yeah. say that's probably so annoying for you, but if you appreciate it, then <laughs> well, that's if great. you guys are here to learn about science, I'm here to learn about sci-fi and movies. Great, I like it. Yeah, me too. That's awesome. The lasers at NIF are incredible, aren't they? As we mentioned earlier, there are 192 of them. They go through a facility the size of multiple football fields. The place is amazing. I actually got to visit once. You're going to see it in a future episode. I can't tell you too much about it right now, but it's really exciting. Once the lasers are created, by the way, they're amplified and amplified and amplified again and again, and then they shoot into the thing that, well, was the warp core in Star Trek Into Darkness. That's the actual ignition location for fusion as we're researching it right now. All 192 beams have to hit simultaneously on this tiny little centimeter-sized target. It's so crazy, and all it does is smush some hydrogen together. Oh, science is the best. Anyway, we've got more science coming next week in the next and last episode of this series, so stick around, make sure you subscribe so you get that, and also make sure you find the podcast Bad Science and also the podcast Secret Plus on your favorite podcast podcast delivery system. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Trace. We'll see you next time on Seeker Plus.